It'll be a disaster if she finds out. Listen, sis is astute, and once enraged, she retains a grudge. She's sound asleep. It's a great shame that I'm not marrying you. My husband's statements astounded me. Because the person who accompanied us was my sister, Nora. I still can't believe she followed us on our honeymoon. At dinner, I put something into her cocktail, so she should be out for a while. That's why I'm suffering from a headache. They conspired on this. This is something I cannot forgive. Because, as Nora pointed out, I'm crafty and keep grudges. I'm going to get back at them hard. Reagan Turner is my name. Reagan Smith will soon be my name. I've liked my job every day since I started working, and I'm now 30 years old. At this pace, I believed I'd never get married, but suddenly a proposal arrived out of nowhere. My employer introduced me. Anthony Smith, two years my senior, was on a blind date. He is the son of the CEO of one of the big corporations with whom we work, and everyone expects him to take over someday. My folks were overjoyed when they learned about the proposal. They seldom call and hardly pay attention to me. When they found out, they started calling and emailing virtually every day. I brought him home one day as a result of their constant nudges. My folks were ecstatic, but there was one dissatisfied expression. Nora, my younger sister, Nora has always desired everything I own since we were youngsters. Birthday presents, clothes and even partners are all acceptable. Nora's sort of man is unknown to me. But it seems like Mom always finds the boys I date appealing and takes them away without hesitation. She was glowing this time, she added, decked up in her best clothing and cosmetics. It's a pleasure to meet you. Nora is the younger sister. Oh no, not again, I reasoned. However, we had already made plans for this time. It would be difficult for her to remove him at this time. That's what I told myself. His parents were overjoyed since they had never seen him with a lady before. After registering our marriage, we moved into an apartment they recommended. It was quite big for a young couple like us. We began our new life. And once we discovered a space in our schedules, we decided to have our wedding and honeymoon on the same day. It didn't take long to get ready. Nonetheless, the wedding arrangements turned out to be far greater than I had anticipated. But what are you going to wear on the day of the reception? What? It's all right. Is that correct, Anthony? Doesn't it look good on me? Nora surprised everyone by wearing a white gown. It is considered impolite to wear white to a wedding. However, when Anthony saw it, he commented, Hmm, it looks good on you. Your small figure looks great in that flowing outfit. Right? Anthony, too, believes so. Reagan, isn't your clothing a yellow-pink mix? What's the big deal if it's your favourite colour? Yes, have a look at this corsage. Nora chose it specifically since it is your wedding. Their mother agreed, as if it were the most normal thing in the world. Let us simply keep smiling. After all, it is a special event, she explained. I wanted to yell. Whose fault is this? Nora's white gown surely stood out during a reception. I observed some visitors on both sides staring at her and murmuring. And Anthony's gaze changed frequently in her direction, which concerned me. We stayed at the hotel where the event took place that night. The next morning, we had a flight scheduled to Hawaii for our honeymoon. We had reserved a guided trip for a week. We rushed to the airport the next morning. I spotted Anthony, often checking his phone on the way. However, due to time constraints, I assumed it was work-related. We arrived after a few hours of flying. We were able to attend the dinner reservation we had made at the hotel. After all, we made it. Cheers. He and I exchanged glasses. Cheers. This drink is very amazing. Do you enjoy it? Thank you very much. Great. It's been a crazy few weeks, so let's eat healthily and get some rest. I drank a couple more of those drinks while eating the various courses. Then, by mistake, I spilled some sauce over my outfit. 
Oh no, I'll return right away. I went to the restroom, hoping to clean it before it discolored. I thought I saw a familiar figure outside on my walk. Nora. That cannot be. She would never follow us here. That's what I convinced myself of. The stranger vanished when I returned from the bathroom. It had to be my imagination, I reasoned. Please accept my apologies for the delay. That's okay, it's fine. Another drink arrived while you were away. Oh, and there was another one in front of me that was a different color. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Everything is all right. I didn't tell him about the Nora-like figure I saw. I was exhausted when we returned to our hotel. Sleep immediately took over with a full stomach. Are you going to bed already? Sorry, I'm just exhausted. That's all right. I'm going to the convenience shop without replying. And I quickly plunged into bed and sank into a deep slumber, almost astonishingly fast. I wonder how long I slept. The forceful opening of the door startled me awake. It had to be Anthony returning. So I attempted to get up. However, a terrible headache kept me from going. It felt like I had the flu. So I chose to stay in bed just as I was about to fall asleep again. Hey, are you sure it's okay? It's all right. Someone had entered Anthony's chamber. A lady. Sis is sound asleep right there. It'll be a disaster if she finds out. She is vengeful and carries grudges. What was that voice saying, sis? Nora. So it wasn't a coincidence that I saw her earlier. She's fast asleep. I put something in her supper drink. She will likely be absent for a while. Anthony, you're a jerk. Let's begin. It's a shame I'm not marrying you. The same is true here. So let us begin the process of having a child. I heard the rustle of cloth dropping as I followed their voices. The drug's side effects most likely caused my headache. The waiter has replenished my drink several times. When I left my seat, he must have put something into it. My rage escalated toward the pair next to me. I can't forgive them both. I groped for my smartphone while hiding under the blankets. Capturing video would be difficult, so I made a point of recording their voices for the future. If I showed any signs of waking up, the ever-vigilant Nora would undoubtedly go. Eventually, the two appeared to be content and descended from the bed and went to the restroom. I took advantage of the chance to shoot the sloppy bed and their strewn garments before crawling back under the covers. They soon returned and began to put on their old clothing. It appeared to be rather rapid. Hey, what are your plans for today? I wish I could spend more time in the tub. As Reagan stated, it is a guided tour package. We won't be able to see all of the attractions if we don't follow the timetable. Does it indicate the guide will mistake me for the bride today? That's quite fantastic. That's correct, Nora. Plans for today, we were going to take a cab in the morning and see several tourist attractions. If that's the case, he'll be back in the evening. Given that I had been pretending to sleep, lying motionless beneath the blankets until Anthony and Nora left. I assume viewing the sunset at the beach was also on the agenda. I sprang up as soon as I heard the door close. My headache had lessened, but I was still perplexed by their erratic behaviour. The light flowing through the window revealed that it was still dawn, and he reasoned that now was the finest moment. I used my smartphone to purchase the earliest flight to JFK. I had merely opened the suitcase without unpacking it. I shut it again. Then, out of nowhere, Anthony's passport on the table attracted my attention. I grinned and slipped it inside my backpack. I made it to JFK in the early afternoon after catching a flight. When I checked my phone, I saw an alarming amount of missed calls and text messages. I reluctantly chose to return one of the calls. What are you doing? Anthony's voice was so loud that I unintentionally removed the phone from my ear. Hey, our bags had gone missing, and guess what? You checked out by yourself. What on earth were you thinking? I apologise for it. I'm presently at JFK. 
are you at JFK? I recalled that I had some pressing matters to attend to. You're still there, aren't you? Without a doubt, I'll be on tour for a week. I'll appreciate it, even if I'm alone. Are you alone? So, have fun with your time. After saying that, I hung up the phone. What should I do next? A week passed in the blink of an eye. Just as I believed it was safe to disconnect, a flood of calls flooded my phone. I initially disregarded them, but after a while, I began to notice them. Hello? Reagan, hello? Do you happen to know where I can find my passport? Is that your passport? What are you on about? I can't seem to recall where I put it. How could I possibly know? Try to recall where you put it on the first day. If you can't find it, simply replace it. What exactly do you mean? Are you certain you have no idea where it is? Why would I do that? John was perplexed. Actually, I was the one who took it. But when pressed, it's not something you're willing to confess. But I didn't lie. Just get a replacement or something. They will allow you to return. It is a substitute. Okay, I'll go to work. I had a time constraint. I was quite busy at the time. He'd probably be back sooner if he'd gotten a travel document instead of a passport replacement. However, there were still many tasks to complete before obtaining a travel document. Then, a little over 10 days later, I received a message from Anthony stating he had his passport reinstated and was on his way back. I had a feeling Nora had been holding him back. I was curious about what Nora had told her family, so I contacted them. Her parents, on the other hand, were agitated and evasive. While waiting at home on the day they were supposed to return, I heard the sound of keys fumbling at the door. In addition, I overheard a chat. Is it all right? Entering your home in this manner? It's okay since she's a workaholic. She's presumably still working on something. What's the deal with these shoes? Shoes filled the foyer in abundance. There were an absurd number of shoes for only two people living together, and Anthony's voice trembled with fear. Then I said, welcome home, and they smiled. Reagan, I assumed you were at work today. I didn't mention I was working, sis. I did mention I had work to do. I knew you'd return home united. I sat and waited. Come on. People. Exactly. Please come inside. Dad, as well as Mom. The in-laws came next. Nora looked surprised at the big pile of shoes. Don't tell me, sis. That's correct. Tetch. Our parents are both present. I then led them to the living room, where everyone had gathered. What's the deal with all these people? It wasn't simply both sets of parents either. Manager, please. Nora, you've been absent from work without explanation. Why didn't you request a vacation extension, Anthony? Anthony and Nora's immediate superiors were both present. That surprised me. You both failed to notify the firm. My phone is broken. Yes, he threw it into the sea. Really? How did you find out? Were you both at the beach? I gave them a silly smile. Hello, Reagan. What's the deal with that tone? Are you wary of your own sister from the start? I'm not trying to seem suspicious, but I am. In fact, I'm here to clear things up, don't you think? Yes, a person holding paperwork announced themselves as a lawyer and handed Anthony, Nora, and their parents business cards. Is he a lawyer? For what purpose? We've had two requests. One from Reagan about a divorce. Mr. wrote the other. What did Smith say about Anthony's inheritance? What? Give up your inheritance. Anthony's gaze flew back and forth between the lawyer, myself, and the in-laws. Nora inquired abruptly and urgently. Wait a minute, attorney. Do you imply Anthony can't become CEO because he refused to accept his inheritance? CEO? The father-in-law chuckled hurtily and beckoned for both of them to have a seat. Then, exasperatedly, he replied, not just CEO. We're going to kick him out of the headquarters entirely. 
don't you understand? Lady is spoiled and naive. Why would you do such a thing? Isn't it self-evident? He goes on a trip with her sister, using his newlywed wife's unexpected necessity as an explanation. What happens to the firm and its employees if someone who does something so outrageously casually and publicly becomes the company's top executive? Isn't it the CEO's responsibility to just sit there? Geez, are you that stupid? Is it true that you are Reagan's sister? What exactly did you call me? Dumb? Dad? Mom? Mr. Smith, forgive me, but don't you think that's a little much? Huh? You're protecting Nora, the woman attempting to swindle your sister Reagan's husband. Isn't Anthony a little out of Reagan's league? These two appear to be in love. Maybe Nora and Reagan should trade places. Bang. The table was smacked forcefully by the father-in-law. I see. Parents like you two must have influenced this oblivious young lady. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law signaled for me to approach her. What exactly is the big deal? It's unjust that Reagan attracts all of the nice suitors. That's why I teased Anthony. Despite the fact that he is slightly older, I desire to be the spouse of a CEO. You claim you're older. Anthony felt surprised. Do you believe you have what it takes to be a CEO's wife? What made you believe that? There was no certainty that Anthony would ever become CEO. But Anthony stated otherwise. Being a CEO is a challenge. Simply being present causes things to move around you. Hemp. I can't put my trust in someone who says things like that. It was only because Reagan was there to support him, but setting Reagan aside, I was wrong. My father-in-law gave me a signal. I played the tape of their chat at that point. Their eyes widened in surprise. Are you awake? What did you put in my drink, please? My head was throbbing when I awoke. I fall. It's fiction. Unbelievable. The father-in-law let out a loud sigh. What are you going to do with me, Dad? I want to break all connections with someone like you. But if I do, I'm concerned I'll sully our company's reputation. Go work in our Texas branch office. No way. Anthony looked helplessly at Nora. Nora, are you coming with me? What? Why would I do that? You stated that you were the CEO's heir. Reagan seemed to be squandering her opportunity, in my opinion. I don't require your assistance. I'm returning you to Reagan. I'm not even sure I want him back. I presented the divorce papers I previously signed at that point. What exactly is this? I'm not going to sign this. We approve, at the very least, as stated by the father-in-law. Dad. Anthony, are you serious? I expected you to mature after marrying Reagan. What on earth were you thinking? I couldn't help myself. Nora was the one who drew me in. Why didn't you simply say no, seriously? Her mother-in-law yelled at her son. Reagan, please accept my heartfelt apologies. You now have a divorce on your record as a result of this imbecile. It's okay. A nice lesson was taught. I suppose I'd be better off concentrating on my profession. Reagan, are you going to abandon me? Should I abandon you? I laughed. You're the one who succumbed to Nora's advances, right? She's always desired and stolen all I've ever had. I definitely do not want any hand-me-downs. Reagan, you don't have to be so cruel. In addition, I raise my voice at my parents. I no longer want to be associated with you. And in this case, Nora has caused me mental distress. Therefore, I'm seeking restitution. You say that to your own parents, right? I'm only restoring what Nora has drained out over the years. That's how I'm going to cut connections with you. I expressed it emphatically. I am a spiteful person who holds grudges. Is that correct, Nora? Didn't you say that? They soon relocated Anthony from the headquarters to a remote field office. He even had to take his mother's surname. The dedication was complete. They drastically lowered his previous wage. Furthermore, 
His parents indicated to me that they were removing my compensation from his decreased wage. He was stationed in a location that deprived him of the opportunity to take breaks and visit a nearby cafe. When you leave the workplace, all you see is a desolate industrial area. There is simply a vending machine outside if you want coffee. If you want coffee, Anthony, we can prepare some for you. The office clerks, older females, remarked with a stretched smile that there had been no young person, whatever their gender, in that office. As a result, seeing a man in his 30s like Anthony was unusual for them, and they appeared to enjoy having him around. The field workers, on the other hand, were constantly shrieking at him. What is this instruction? The figures are incorrect. Hey, when are you going to place your material order? It won't be on time, and so forth. Every day, Anthony would text his folks, complaining about being screamed at. He'd also text me stuff like, please forgive me. It was a lapse in judgment. Ask our parents to intervene. I can't give up on you yet, and other crap. He never called immediately, for whatever reason. Presumably, he didn't want to be directly counted. Nora, in the meantime, had lost her job. She had spent much too much time abroad with Anthony, and the cause of her dismissal was crucial. She couldn't find another job and stayed at home practically every day, berating her parents and begging, why didn't you stop me? She was also enraged at me. Why are you torturing your own sister? Didn't I see right through him? You should be grateful to me. So forget about the monetary recompense. My parents, for their part, began sending me voicemails and emails with requests such as, please, can you reduce Nora's compensation? You're her big sister, right? Why are you so obstinate? You'll never get married again with such a mindset, and so forth. Of course, I saved all of their text messages and voicemails. I used them as proof and obtained a restraining order from my attorney. I felt tremendous relief. Anthony's father soon transferred me to his firm. Not the main office, where Anthony worked, but a new branch. Reagan, I've always admired your dedication to your career. My ex-father-in-law told me, I want you to use your talent as a starting member of the branch. My ex-father-in-law recognised my professional ability and placed me in an important position. Apparently, my former employer did not properly utilise my skills. My days are hectic yet extremely gratifying because of him. On my days off, I enjoy delectable home-cooked meals prepared by my ex-mother-in-law. Even if you've broken up with Anthony, I'd prefer to keep you as our daughter. You know, I've always wanted a daughter. How about being our adopted daughter, Reagan? Hearing these remarks from my former mother-in-law is really wonderful, given that my biological parents have always favoured my sister and rarely recognised me. I'm not sure if I'll follow through with it, but I feel my days will be brighter for the time being.